Well, here we are again today, folks. We're on the third uh, disciple, which was actually the first one, which was Andrew. And Andrew had uh, gone over to witness Jesus' baptism. And he got over there and witnessed it. And uh, like his brother Simon Peter, Andrew was a fisherman too. And uh, Andrew's life was, in John's Gospel said, that he came from Bethsaida. And by, at the time that Jesus' ministry, they made their home in Capernaum. That's where Peter and Andrew were living in Capernaum. Capernaum. Uh, and they were partners in the fishing business. And uh, with James and John, and they were called, James and John were the sons of Dev Zebedees, and they were called the sons of thunder. I suspect they were called th sons of thunder for a reason. They were probably two uh, ganglial fishermen that knew exactly how to fish. I suspect that Peter had him take one of his boats and said, y'all just go ahead and fill that thing up now, and we're going to challenge you. Me and Andrew are going to challenge you two and see who can get the most fish each day and bring them in. And uh, so uh, Jesus was very interested in these two boys because he knew that they were go-getters. And that's what Jesus was looking for. He was looking for go -getters. You know, Jesus never chose a lazy man all the time he was on the earth. He never chose a lazy He chose people that were busy, working. I, I, probably that's why he uses my family. My family's a working as family you haven't met. People have always accused me of being a workaholic. And I've always said to them, I'm the laziest man on earth. But the reason you think I'm a workaholic is I fight laziness by working. And that's how I fight laziness, by working. Now the disciple of John the Baptist, Andrew witnessed Jesus being baptized, and he was impressed by John's declaration now when John said this. When John said, uh, Behold, the Lamb of God, and which was Jesus, uh, had come up over the hill, here he came, and John said, Behold the Lamb of God. And uh, Andrew witnessed that. And it made a great depression on him. And by John's uh, declaration that Jesus was the Lamb of God, he decided to meet him. Now, this is quite a guy. Andrew, you want to know the truth of the matter? How many of y'all uh, have been, for instance, to a Billy Graham crusade and would be willing to take the time to go down until the crowd was gone and actually shake hands and meet Billy Graham instead of leaving. Most people wouldn't do that. But here's Andrew. He, he's got enough guts about him and he's got enough stamina about him and he's drawn in his heart to follow Jesus. And Jesus knows that too, by the way, because Jesus knows the heart from the inside out. So then, uh, after Andrew met the Messiah and res resolved to follow him, he decided then to follow him. We don't know exactly at that point what Jesus said to Andrew. It's not recorded. But thus Andrew became the first uh, disciple of Jesus. He then brought his brother to Jesus who received him also as he uh, his disciple and named him Peter. And uh, later, Jesus called the two brothers permanently to his ministry, uh, telling them that he wanted to make them fishes of men. Now, I said a few minutes ago, it's not recorded what he said to Andrew. There is some things recorded what he said to Andrew, but it's not recorded why Andrew made this decision uh, to follow him. Andrew is a Greek name and means manly. A Greek name that means manly. Remember now, Peter's name meant rock, and here's Andrew. He's manly. So now you had a manly rock <laughs> following Jesus. Uh, he seems to have had quite a strength of character. Now, Andrew, through the, the what we know of Andrew, his character was strong, and uh, his helpfulness, on which uh, others could rely. They always could rely on Andrew to be. By the way, Andrew was the one that told Jesus at the feeding of the 5,000 uh, that the boy had five barley loaves and uh, two fishes. 
By the way, that's quite an important thing for you to remember. If you're a uh, follower of Jesus and you want to be Christ-like, and if you need to know some of this stuff. You need to dig out these boys and uh, read about them and find out about them and chase them through the Bible and see where they went, where they came from, what they did, and how they worked. And again, it was Andrew that uh, uh, Philip came for advice when some Greeks requested to meet with Jesus. Some Greeks wanted to meet with Jesus. And Philip come over there and said, Andrew, what do you think about this? And uh, Andrew said, why, well, of course, if, you know, if they aren't against us, they're for us, or whatever. And uh, Andrew uh, seemed to have known Greek very well. And in that day, uh, men could use different languages, different dialects, especially fishermen on the Sea of Galilee. They were subject to go into one port or another port. Or they were subject to go in different places. Well, when they got there, they needed to know the language. Uh, of those people and so these guys were I know that at the day of Pentecost that the the people over there said well aren't these unlearned men these fishermen whatever well, I'm on here to tell you fishermen weren't unlearned they were smart well, they were not only smart they knew other people's language they knew how to barter they knew how to trade they knew how to get the most out of their fish and they knew what fishing was all about and uh, later on Andrew in history, now it's not in, in recorded in the Bible, but in history, uh, the church historian, uh, I don't know how to say his name, but it's Eusebus, uh, recorded that uh, in Scythia, and that, that's an area in, in Russian territory, and uh, between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, now, I'm a, I'm a gatherer of books, and I have some good books, and I have books on the early churches and the first churches and where they were. They were mostly all in Asia, all seven of them, and uh, Asia Minor, they were over there. And I have uh, pictures of these churches and uh, where these men went and how they did and stuff, and I'm an ardent studier of that type of thing as well as the Bible. But I mainly stick to the Bible. But uh, the Apocryphal Acts, and that's a different book now than the Acts that we, we read. The Acts that we read is the Divine Acts. But then there is another Acts, which is in the Apocryphal and of Andrew, uh, tells us that he preached the gospel and suffered martyrdom by crucifixion in Greece. <clears throat> now, to me, that was kind of odd. I did not know that the Greeks did the same as the Romans did and crucified people uh, the way that the Romans did. I did not think the Greeks were that barbaric. Uh, the Greeks were a very uh, intelligent people. They knew how to take words. And by the way, the Bible was written partly in Greek, and they knew how to take words and make words have four or five meanings uh, to them. A uh, later tradition maintains that his body was taken, and of course this would be by the uh, Catholic Church now, and taken during the Crusaders and transferred into Amplify in Italy. And you know Andrew is revered as one of the saints in the Catholic uh, Church. This is the very reason God hid the body of Moses, so they wouldn't make a saint out of him. And they weren't supposed to make a saint out of Andrew either. And uh, I'm supposed that he's in heaven, and it probably disturbs him greatly that they did that. But there's nothing he can do about it. But one day God's going to do something about it. Well, this is Brother Peter, uh, for tidbits from the Word. If you'd like to learn a little more in your Christian life how to follow God and get your root to be deeper and bigger around and better and stretch out further, click on to woak.com LaGrange, woaklagrange.com, and listen to the radio station there. It has good singing, good preaching, 24-7s. Well, we'll see you. Been good to talk with you again.